Mm -hmm. It's not too bad. However, we still have a few challenges. The big ones, of course, being the global eco political situation. You have Russia, that's still going on. Yeah. You have the Middle East, so that could very well impact wholesale energy prices. And if that all kicks off again, then hold on to your hats. Yeah, and how, di how difficult is it to predict what will happen with inflation and indeed with interest rises when you've got such an unpredictable world picture like that? It's very difficult, which is why I expect the bank to, if not sit on their hands, to act very cautiously. This yeah. is why I think we're probably only going to have one rate cut and that'll be probably balanced towards the end of the year, maybe November or December, when the last two uh, MPC meetings are. You've also got to bear in mind the possibility of a US economy going into a hard landing. Mm. And if the US goes into recession, then again, yeah. that will have an impact here. Um, I mean, what an impact it, it, it could possibly have. Um, to just spell out to us the dangers in America and, you know, if they sneeze, we, we catch cold. How bad could it be? Uh, depending on America? To be honest, it depends entirely on what the political risk is. At the moment, a lot of p businesses in the US, they've done the things that a lot of businesses over here did. They saved money during the pandemic and they started spending and investing again. And then you had the tech companies start making mass redundancies because they overspent. So they're in a bit of a weird situation and they're now waiting for the outcome of the US mm -hmm. presidential elections to see what the environment looks like before they start spending again. Mm. Mm. Jeff, just looking at the figures out this morning, uh, mainly driven by prices of gas and electricity uh, falling by less than a year ago. Tell us a bit more about that. Yes, basically we had a lot of uh, energy prices are historically still higher than they were. What happened last month was that we had the off-gym announcements, mm. which uh, mm. brought about a big cut in the rate of inflation. Now. Prices are still volatile, so they've gone up a teensy bit, and that's flowed through into the inflation figures here. But also the fact that we had, because the big off gem cut is now out of the inflation figures, that's why we've crept upwards. Mm. Mm. And the largest downward contribution actually came from restaurants and hotels. Apparently, the prices of hotels have actually fallen yes. in the past year. The problem is, quite frankly, a lot of these businesses are still feeling the effects of uh, the pandemic. Mm. Beforehand, you had a very, you had a thriving tourism business, you had a thriving hospitality sector, if not thriving, that at the very least doing all right. Uh, we have both higher energy prices to contend with and higher staff costs. And yeah. unfortunately, with inflation rising, that means their costs are now permanently higher. Higher, higher staff inflation. costs and actually getting staff is, is also a big problem. So were you saying, let's just take the, the weekend, um, uh, Jeff, if, uh, people are simply deciding, I haven't got the money to spend anymore, mm. we're not going out, and therefore that not only kills the restaurants and the bars and things, but also uh, associated businesses on those high streets. Absolutely. You're looking at an all-over effect. Taxis, all sorts of things. Absolutely. Yeah. You're looking at an all-over effect. So it's not just, obviously, uh, you know, the sales at takeaways, restaurants, pubs, bars. You're also looking at things like retail sales, because if you're not going out yeah. and dressing up to the nines to, say, go clubbing or something like yeah. that, then, quite frankly, you're sitting on your uh, money, putting it towards rent and some of the other things that you basically need to live. Yeah. Like food and supermarkets, which Quite. is also going up, isn't it? Quite. Unfortunately, some of those things you can't really do much about, and neither can the supermarkets. We have probably the most competitive supermarket sector in the world, but even they, and despite their pricing power, can't do anything about the fact that we've had droughts in certain key food-producing nations, Spain, for example. You still have the impact in Ukraine. Ukraine is one of the biggest producers of wheat mm -hmm. and sunflower oil, so that's one of the reasons why they're a lot higher than they used to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I know some people who are looking to spend money and just can't spend it. I mean, take Miss Ellie here. She's dying to buy a Taylor Swift ticket and she can't get one anywhere. No, not for love or no, money. No, I can't buy I one. Think, I wouldn't but go that far. I think if she spent enough. Uh, if I spent, about, yeah. About three grand might get About three get grand I might get yeah. a ticket. That's true. And I'm not doing that, actually. I'm trying to be budget friendly. <laughs> Jeff, really good to see you. Thank you very much. Jeff, thank you.